This topic is on chronic management of asthma in adults. This video follows the Chronic Asthma in Adults Guidelines 2020. Asthma is a chronic, reversible, inflammatory condition of the airway. It is characterized by three main features, airway inflammation, airway obstruction, and bronchial hypersensitivity. Healthcare professionals should suspect asthma in patients who have the following symptoms, wheeze, shortness of breath, chest tightness, or cough in absence of upper respiratory tract infections. Symptoms are also usually worse at night, and they are usually triggers for the onset of symptoms. These include exercise, allergen exposure, cold air, and drugs such as NSAIDs and beta blockers. The diagnosis of asthma include performing a thorough history and examination. There is no single test available to diagnose asthma, but there are multiple tests available to support or suggest the diagnosis of asthma. Fractional exhaled nitric oxide involves patient breathing into a mouthpiece attached to a handheld monitor and the levels of nitric oxide will be measured. A higher level of nitric oxide measured in the patient's breath may indicate asthma. Spirometry measures the amount of air the patient can breathe out of their lungs and how fast the patient can blow it out. This can help suggest the breathing pattern as normal, obstructive, or restrictive. Bronchial dilator reversibility test involves measuring them again after salbutamol treatment, while direct bronchial challenge testing involves performing spirometry again after treatment with histamine or methacholine to induce asthma-like symptoms. As for peak flow, patients will be asked to breathe in all the way and blow out as fast as they can into a peak flow meter. Peak expiratory flow is usually reduced in asthma. Remember that it is important to refer all suspected occupational asthma to the specialists. The treatment of chronic asthma can be divided into lifestyle and pharmacological treatments. For lifestyle management, it is important to inform patients to identify and avoid triggers if possible. Always check inhaler techniques and adherence, and encourage smoking cessation, weight loss, and keeping up to date with their vaccinations. This is an overview of the pharmacological management of chronic asthma in primary care. There are multiple steps GP can prescribe before referring patients to the specialists. Remember to always check for adherence and inhaler techniques before escalating. Step 1 is the introduction of short-acting beta-2 agonist or salbutamol inhaler. Step 2 adds a low dose of inhaled corticosteroids on top of salbutamol. According to NICE guidelines, start straight at step 2 if the patient has asthma symptoms three times a week or more, or are woken up at night by asthma symptoms once weekly or more. Step 3 involves adding a leukotriene receptor antagonist, such as Montelukast. If the patient's asthma symptoms are still not well controlled, the next step would be adding a long-acting beta-2 agonist, such as Salmeterol. You can continue or discontinue LTRAs, depending on its effectiveness. Step 5 would be swapping out the low-dose inhaled corticosteroids and the long-acting beta-2 agonist for the MART regime. The MART regime stands for Maintenance and Reliever Therapy, and the patient will use it as a prevention therapy and during acute attacks as well. The regime in Step 5 contains a low-dose inhaled corticosteroid and a fast-acting, long-acting beta-2 agonist such as formoterol. Step 6 would be to increase the MUD regime's inhaled corticosteroids dose to a moderate dose, or you can replace the MUD regime into individual inhalers of moderate ICS and LABA. If the asthma is still uncontrolled after this step, refer the patient to the specialists. Do note that the management of asthma is prone to changes. It has changed twice during my five years of medical school so it might be worth checking the guidelines regularly. These are the drug classes 
used in the management of chronic asthma, Sabas, like Salbutamol, causes side effects like tachycardia, tremors, and hypokalemia. This is why nebulized Salbutamol can also be used in the management of hyperkalemia in an acute setting. ICS, like Beclometazone, may cause oral candidiasis, an altered taste or voice. Remind patients to rinse their mouth after each use. Prolonged use or high doses of ICS may also lead to systemic side effects such as hypertension, weight gain, and hyperglycemia. Examples of long-acting beta-2 agonists include salmeterol and the faster-acting formoterol used in the MART regime. And lastly, examples of leukotriene receptor antagonists include montilucast. There are specialist treatments available such as omalizumab in severe asthma and a couple of other monoclonal antibody treatments for severe eosinophilic asthma. I personally do not think that is very relevant for exams and it's probably something to note if you're interested. Do note that the dosages of ICS can be classified into low, moderate, and high. Low doses refers to less than 400 micrograms. Moderate refers to doses of 400 to 800 micrograms, and any dose higher than 800 micrograms refers to a high dose. With regards to monitoring and review, consider reducing maintenance therapy when asthma is well controlled for more than three months. NICE guidelines also recommends an annual review of asthma and mentions using the RCP3 questionnaire. These questions include asking the patient if, number one, if they have had any symptoms, number two, if these symptoms interferes with their quality of life, and number three, if they have had any problems sleeping because of their symptoms. Asthma is a relatively common condition and is one of the favorite topics for exams. It's important for you to be able to recognize and suspect asthma, know how to diagnose and understand the step-by-step -step treatment and probably know some of the drug classes and examples including side effects too. The review for asthma control is an extremely common topic, especially for OSCEs, so it might be worth remembering the RCP3 questions. I hope you have enjoyed this video and subscribe for more videos in the future.